I would like to bring up the challenge with Titanic dataset provided by Kaggle. We are given a CSV file which has information related to the passengers aboard the Titanic along with a question to whether they survived from the incident or not. Each of us has to use the data to make a model that can predict the chance of survival for the passengers. Briefly afterwards, I will present SVM, Support Vector Machine, my algorithm of choice, then walk you through my workflow to understand how I configure the nodes. After pulling the CSV reader node in NIME, this is the view we have from Titanic dataset. The question here is what attribute we want the model to predict. Now we try to find the relationship between the attributes such as sex, age, ticket class, etc. and the survival column. Passenger ID has nothing to do with the survival rate as it is a unique value for each passenger. We drop this variable. The variable P class means passenger class with the key 1, 2, 3 respectively. Reflect from the survival column by grouping passengers from first class has a higher chance of surviving. The majority of the passengers in the third class did not survive. Therefore, passenger class is an important factor while predicting the survival rate of the passengers. The feature is already numerical, so it can be directly passed to any machine learning model during training. Name has a prefix like Mr, Mrs, Miss and Master, which indicate the relation with age and sex and implies that women and children had a better chance of surviving compared to men because of their saving priority. Age also influences the outcome because of the saving priority, assuming that young adult passengers have the highest probability of dying compared to children and the seniors. Siblings, spouse, and parent children both represent the same thing. The family size of the passenger and from observation, people who were traveling with someone had more chance to survive compared to those who were traveling alone. Then this is a typical factor. Ticket number has nothing to do with survival rate as it does not provide the right information to predict. However, it could also relate to the passenger class, just like fare attribute. We also have variable cabin, which has many missing values and most passengers who did not survive also did not have a cabin number. So this variable is not much of influence. The last attribute is embarked with three categorical values representing Southampton, Shibuok, and Queenstown. People who boarded from Shibuok has a higher chance of survival than the other two, so we also take it into account. As now I understand the challenge and our goal for Titanic case, as well as the dataset and its attribute, I'd like to show you how I analyze, cleans, and prepare the data by configuring the knots in NIME Analytics. This is an overview of my simple workflow. I started with CSV reader node because our input is stored in CSV format. Browse the location of the file, adjust the setting, and then apply. To review, I go to File Table, check the row and the columns to make sure they are fully in place. To get to know the nominal and numeric values, I pull the statistic node. As I want to evaluate all of my attributes, I include all of them in the view and then click on View, Statistic View. Then I could see what age, cabin, and embark are the attributes missing the value. After assessing the value format, I want to convert numbers to string. Here I choose attribute survive because this is what I want to predict. Moreover, I want to group my columns to avoid repetition, which I found relevant to my function and remove the columns that I found not relevant, which are ticket ID and cabin number. Look at the group table now. I have value in survive in the form of string, which is processed to help me predict the result. To clean my set, I decide to filter and enforce inclusions of my selected attributes and pull the knot to filter on column with missing value. Now my task is to fill this missing value to complete data set. Here you can see my action on each of them in default mode. I choose most frequent value to string type, get the mean for integer number, and leave the double number as it is. Next, I go to column setting 
to be more specific on the attribute that I want to pull the mean of age and the most frequent value for in bucket because this attribute misses only two values for the entire 891 rows. To confirm my selection, I go to output table after executing and see that my data set is clean and complete. What I need to do now is to pick up partitioning and divide my set into two parts, 70% of the sample for training and 30% for testing. Having the full set of data after pre-processing, I have to decide on the algorithm, which is SVM. Support Vector Machine is a supervised machine learning algorithm which can be used for classification or regression problems. With the Titanic data set we have, I refer to classification problem. It uses a technique called the Kellner trick to transform my data, and then based on this transformation, it finds an optimal boundary between the possible output. Simply put, it does some extremely complex data transformation, then figure out how to separate my data based on the labels or outputs I have defined. In this graph, we notice that there are two classes of observations, the red points and the green points. There are many ways to separate these two classes as shown in the graph on the left. However, we want to find the best hyperplane that could maximize the machine between these two classes which means that the distance between the hyperplane and the nearest data points on each side is the largest. Depending on which side of the hyperplane a new data point locates, we could assign a class to the new observation. It sounds simple in this example. However, not all data are linearly separable. In fact, in the real world, almost all the data randomly just distributed, which makes it hard to separate different classes linearly. If we find a way to map the data from two-dimensional space to three-dimensional space, we will be able to find a decision surface that clearly divides between different classes. My first thought of this data transformation process is to map all the data points to a higher dimension, find the boundary, and make the classification. Learning how we classify the data points with a decision surface in two and three dimensions I choose SVM for Titanic dataset because I am looking for an easy to use but powerful supervised model for binary classification to answer my question of survival probability of each passenger. The Titanic set is not too big, so a handy model will be a quick fix in this case. SVM has not too many hyperparameters which are easy to understand and apply with my variables. And above all, this is an algorithm for beginners, which is easy to use like other models, but is proven to bring in better accuracy in result. To apply SVM algorithm, I pull the not learner and predictor, connect the training sample to learner and the rest to test. You can see from my configuration setting, I choose polynomial kernel as default and apply the model. From this predictor node, I execute and check on classification with a sample of 268 rows. From the learner node, I check on SVM view to see my parameters. Finally, to estimate the precision of my prediction, I pull the scorer node and configure the attribute for my accuracy matrix so that I choose survive in my first column and prediction of survival in my second column. Now we can get to the result in the confusion matrix. I have 152 counts of true negative from the passengers who did not survive and were predicted correctly, along with 49 counts of true positive who made it from the ship rate. All in all, the accuracy rate from my SVM model is 75%, which is a fairly good score. To improve the accuracy, there are several ways, such as characterize closer relationships among attributes of the data, or when distributing the data in SVM Learner, we can set the parameter near the upper and bound low, and then tune them to reach best configuration. Of course, the favorable score should be higher than 80, 90%, and approaching 100%. However, with a simple model requiring no coding, but only working on selecting the characteristic using the knots, SVM seemed to be a good option.